Hey, folks, Quilly Teen here, and welcome, welcome, welcome to a Tuesday live stream. A bit unusual, but it's kind of a big deal. Imperial Rome 2.0 dropped today, as well as the Heirs of Alexander uh, DLC. And Paradox has sponsored a stream for us to play some Imperator. Man, I'm happy to be back in this, because, I mean, the, the concept of Imperator should be fantastical. But, uh, you know, Paradox had to put in a little bit of extra time to uh, bring the game up to another level, and hopefully it's going to be everything that we have been hoping for. Bum, 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 <laughs> um, yeah, so I hope everyone's staying warm. I know there's a bunch of places that have had some freak snowstorm, Texas getting power problems and things like that. Hope everyone's okay out there. Jeez. <laughs> Any advice for the Basilius achievement in EU4? I don't really do achievements that often, because I actually don't end up playing an Iron Man that much, because a lot of my gameplay is just stuff I do for recording, and in case there's ever a technical problem, I have to be able to uh, reload from a save. Um, you know, the stream stuff we could do Iron Man, but the, uh, the YouTube series um, can't, because, I mean, on the stream stuff, if something goes wrong, well, everyone sort of sees that it's going wrong right away anyway, so it doesn't really make much of a difference, does it? <laughs> You only lost power this morning. Some people... It's only one hour of power in the last 48 hours. Jeez! That's crazy sauce. Crazy! Anyway, um... We're gonna start pretty quickly here. Uh, if you do go do exclamation mark what game, you get a little info there, as well as a link you can follow. You click on that, you can get some more information. Whether or not you own the game or not, uh, you should be able to get some stuff there. Um, oh, Octagon. I'll have to check that out. Hmm... Hmm. So, what I'm going to do is I'm not going to go through sort of a list of the changes that have come with 2.0. And the reason is uh, we did a YouTube video um, that just went live this morning, actually. And it's sort of an overview of some of the changes of 2.0 and uh, what Heirs of Alexander brought. So, I think we're going to focus very much on just playing here today. We are going to play as Macedon, though. Because I think that's going to show off a lot of new content. And as I mentioned in, in the YouTube video, we haven't really played any of the majors. We keep playing like little tribals, right? We were playing, uh, we did a run uh, over here in, in Britain. We did a Monopia run because Belgium. And then we did a run uh, way over here as Nebatia. So let's actually sit down and play as one of the big boys. At some point, we'll have to actually play Rome. But that is not, I mean, it's literally in the title of the game. But we're going to do Macedon. Um, because, first of all, Macedon right out of the box, even in vanilla, uh, was a pretty strong and fun nation to play. But here, with the Heirs of Alexander DLC, there's uh, some custom content for it, as well as a unique kind of war mode that works differently from any other type of CB or war mode in this game, or even EU4. The, the thing I can think of it the most resembling is some of the... Um, some of the types of wars that you would see in Stellaris, where star systems would actually flip ownership right away. <laughs> what have the Romans ever done for us? Exactly! Exactly. So, I don't think there's any settings we're going to tweak over here. You know, normal difficulty is fine. I'll, we'll go Iron Man mode. Oh, yeah, we'll just leave the defaults. Bam! Happy Tuesday, yeah. So, there's not going to be a stream tomorrow. Not going to be a stream tomorrow. Yeah, the Macedon's like a hive mind, exactly. Hey, no one! Uh, oh, hold on. I need to bring up my other page so I can read that properly. I want to Here's for the Vinum et Skelarisk Fund. Wine and chocolate. I keep wanting to love this game, but haven't gotten into it. Well, hopefully, this will be the time for us to get it all in here. All right, let's read this. Alexander the Great Argeid. 18 years ago, Argeid King Alexander III died suddenly in Babylon at the age of 32. In the five years preceding his death, his continuing military successes had reshaped the world as known to the Greeks, his empire stretching uninterrupted from Egypt to the Indus. The suddenness of Alexander's early death and his lack of a chosen successor sent shockwaves through the hierarchy of satraps and generals who attended him, splintering his empire into elements ruled by these potentates styled as the Diadochi, for many years, they and their successors have been locked in bitter struggle over the struggle of the empire, future of the empire, drawing all nations within their sphere of influence into the conflict. The wars of the Diodoki will surely continue. Perhaps it is up to Macedon to decide how they will end. 
The die is cast. All right, so the game's going to be paused. Uh, we are 1st of October of 450. I don't remember what the, uh, yeah, the, the, from the founding of Rome, right? From the founding of the city of Rome. So it's 304 BC is effectively what we are over here. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the big things that changed with 2.0 is the military system is radically different. Uh, now we're going to be reliant on levies. However, as Macedon, we do start with the with having a, a legion from our capital uh, area immediately, which is really nice. We also start with a fair amount of money. That's that's a decent bank to start off with compared to a lot of other nations. What I'm not sure about is if the best thing to do is to go right into our builder here, pop down. I like to uh, get farming settlements everywhere that can have farming. I like to have mines everywhere that can have mines uh, to start off with. It's a really good way to boost the economy. On the other hand, what we might want to do is spend the money buffing the heck out of our legion. You know, with some some combination of cohorts. You can see there's a cost here. It takes manpower and money to embiggen our legion. Now, the legion also has maintenance, so I mean, you know, if we don't focus on our economy, we make we're not going to have the same income. And then on top of that, if we spend it on legions, we're going to have even reduced income. So I don't know what's correct. I don't know what's correct. I don't know if anyone's going to feedback there. War is going to happen pretty fast. We don't have to go looking for it. It's going to happen. All of the people in the various um, these these yokies or whatever are uh, we're going to get involved in some kerfuffleage pretty soon. Dom the Viewer says, have a Western Civ class in 1.5 hours. This is me studying, viewing since the banished days. Oh, wow, Dom. Thank you very much. And that has been a really long time. If you make legions, a, a Kaiser will DMCA strike you. Rome doesn't even have access to legions at the start of the game, I don't think. I think they have to develop the laws for it, which is kind of amazing. Hey, Finnegan. Yeah, we could call them a phalanx. I mean, in, in the game terms over here, they just refer to levies and legions. But yeah. Phalanx would be a thing. We've got some disloyal characters right away. We have a decent sized navy. We've got two fleets of 17 ships each uh, with exactly the same composition over here. Um, that might be helpful early on. Well, tell you what we're going to do. We're going to go through the flags at the top of the screen. Usually a good way to get started on everything. Economy for sure, long power. Yeah, and I, I think that's probably safest. I think we do start with the economy. So, um, tell you what, let's start from right to left here. Free idea slots, standard thing. In Imperator Rome, your government will have these different idea slots. For us, it's one military and two oratory ideas, which sounds okay. Now, for the military, plus 5% morale is insanely huge for, for combat. It's really, really good. Shipbuilding cost, I think it is going to be really useful in our region to have a lot of ships, but I don't think I'm going to take that as a military idea. Ordered retreat, though, is pretty nuts, too. Um, reinforcement seed, arm, ar army recovery is good too so as soon as you finish a battle it's going to rebuild more quickly i think we have to go for the flat morale here um i think that's really the only reasonable option i do also like when it's available i guess we just don't have access to it uh, i mean different nations have different ideas available the one that gives um boost to loyalty of your generals and reduces the chance that cohorts become sort of loyal to that general is a really good idea to run as well but i think we'll go martial ethos for our oratory ideas, we get to pick two. The only ones that are available right now: sanctioned privilege, which lowers monthly corruption; uh, military administration. Oh, here it is: loyalty of generals, loyalty of admirals. That's pretty handy. The high loyalty there, uh, and hospitium, which improves the maximum amount of opinion we can improve by. None of these, I think, are showstoppers. Um. Being able to fight corruption is pretty good. This will give us a little bit more leeway when there's certain events that trigger that we can take, like, anti-corruption. Or we can take things that lead to corruption because it'll burn off faster. I think I really like this idea. I think we might go with military administration. Although I have to say, I think hospitium would be pretty handy as well. I think we're going to do this. All right. So, we have picked ideas that match our slots. As such, we get an extra benefit here. Uh, monthly tyranny is going to decrease quicker. Uh, our citizens, remember there's four different types of, of pops in this game. Slaves, tribesmen, freemen, citizens. So, the citizens will be happier. Um, and uh, the cities want more freemen. So, I think it'll wait more in that direction. I don't know. 
Bigger army diplomacy needs lo loyal leaders. That's true. We can also take a decision over here. Expand Thesos gold mines. Costs us a hundred bucks. Thesos, this little island right over here, will permanently get redeveloped gold mines. 10% more population cap, plus one base resource production. Um, and we need fewer slaves for local surplus, which gives you like extra stuff. It does move some slaves as well, but that's kind of break even. I kind of like this idea. I kind of like this idea. Four types now. Didn't I just list four? Slaves, freemen, tribemen, citizens? Pretty sure I said four. I think... I think I like this idea. Let's do it. Oh, nobles, there's five now! Yeah, yeah. You know what? I do remember seeing the fifth. Yeah, right over there. So you typoed when you said there are four now. You meant to say there are five now. Omen-wise, one of the omens we can do gives us a discipline boost, which is beautiful. Happiness is good. Aggressive expansion change. I don't think we're going to have to worry about, actually. Um, we can also get a discount to monthly wages for characters. Now, that might be kind of nice. Our wages right now are two gold per month. We can shave almost 10% off of that. Can you guys hear, like, a motor rev revving? For every... I've lived... Okay, so I've lived in this house over 10 years, and we've gone through four different neighbors next door. Four different people have lived next door. Every single one of them have been massive motorcycle and snow machine enthusiasts, which apparently requires you, when you turn it on, to just sit there revving it for five minutes before you do anything with it. And you have to do that several times a day, Otherwise, it doesn't work. Now, normally, it's not an issue here in the basement. In the literally basement. But they must be going insane out there with something. They probably have some friends over. Bunch of loser idiots. It did snow last night, so I think they're all excited about it. Anyway, here, I think what we're going to do... We don't... Hmm. All right, we're going to go Aphrodite first to save us a few bucks. Um, these, these, these omens only last for a certain period of time. We're going to want to be running the Omen of Heracles as soon as we get into a war, but we've got a little bit before that, um, that happens, hopefully. So I think the right thing to do here is to run Aphrodite, save a few bucks, and then we'll swap back over to, uh, to Heracles. Um, and then, yeah, these are the holy, some holy sites for our religion. We don't necessarily control all these. Yeah, that's not controlled by us. Actually, we don't control any of these right now. All right, done, done, done. Uh, inventions. So, if you didn't see the video, the invention system is very different now. So we have four different tech trees for inventions, and actually, oh, and some of them have two trees inside of them. Our military tree actually has three sub trees within it. Um, civic advances over here, oratory goes deep, religious advances. Right now we have eight innovations, so we can grab eight of these things. I don't know what to aim for. I'm sure there's going to be some key things to target, but, I mean, there's so many things in here. Does it, want to, does it say research efficiency? Oh, that's maximum research efficiency. I don't know if we need to raise our cap on that right now. Can you give me, like, two seconds? I need to figure out what the heck's going on outside. I've never heard the sound. I'm just worried there's something really weird happening. Let me, let me, short, short break. Be right back. You guys think about our deck. There you go. Just had to make sure everything everything was okay here, you guys. Sound is sound is fixed. No more no more crazy noises in the background now. Um, oratory advances go deep. Does that require rubber gloves? Hey now. So I'm kind of tempted to go into mill martial advances because there is going to be a lot of early warring here as Macedon, and I think that's a little bit nuts to not go for it. Um, on the other like the other test games I did in here, uh, not as Macedon, it was quite important to go to professional training quickly because this is what helps you unlock legions we don't need to do that 
However, it does give us 5% more discipline, which is kind of insane. Now, the other thing with basic training over here, starting experience 5%, I wonder if that applies to the legions when we raise them. Check out elite recruitment. Elite recruiting standards. 15% more starting experience, and our heavy infantry discipline gets another 5%. Yeah. And there's some ones that they've got the extra little flags next to them. I think they're particularly potent. And anything with a little whip icon is going to be disciplined. I mean, that's 10% more discipline. This gives us a full legion. So right now we only have one legion in our capital region. We can make it bigger, but there's still certain limits. With cohorts here, we could unlock it for everyone. Now, material science is what we have. Army weight, fort defense. Siege engineers. I mean, it is nice to siege things down faster. Uh, navigation. Okay, so we've got some ship stuff over here. Core. I think I think the plan, and now let's go into planning mode here. We're going to pick military artisans. Basic training, active drill. Professional training, retirement opportunities, which will save us money on our legions. Elite recruitment standards. So that would be, that's six points over there. We actually, okay, we can't go to cohorts because we need to go down the other branch as well. We could go to veteran enticement. Which is, morale recovery is nice, but not deal-breaking. And then, mark in plan. Okay, promotion through valor. Yeah, mark in plan is what I'm doing now. Uh, where I'm just sort of clicking the planning here. A promotion through valor. More discipline, but also successful city sieges by your legions will generate... What is this? What is this icon? Not the tool tipping it for me. Oh, it's right over here. We'll generate more military experience. Ah! Which uh, lets us unlock military traditions. What if we just beeline down to here? We don't have to spend it right away. We could wait a little bit. It's probably still worth to at least go down to retirement opportunities right now. I could get cohort. No, I can't get cohorts right away because I got to go down both sides. Oh, it's one of. Oh, never mind. Let's go to cohorts. Now we'll still have to change our laws to run cohort. If, if we want to recruit more, and of course that's still more money, but I think it's worth unlocking it because the, the extra 10% discipline, we know discipline is huge. I mean, the combat mechanics in here are similar to EU4. EU4 is, of course, where I have most of my experience with these sorts of things, but it is a significant boost. Uh, we need a scientist over here. In terms of families, um, right now all of our families are satisfied with the jobs they've got. We could get another um, eliminated, eliminated person recruited here um that would give them like they they would want two people employed currently there are three we can go up to four which would bring them up to grateful which is good for all kinds of modifiers now you're level seven this is a level 14 over here i feel like we'll go for the level 14 neither one of them have a ton of statesmanship yeah we're gonna go with that i think that's gonna be very handy all right, our fleet need commanders. I will probably just take the uh, the higher ranked ones. That's going to be okay. What else we have? Bad research ratio, sure. Disloyal characters, um, which could lead to a civil war right now. Although um, this guy, I think we just hired him, so he's actually becoming loyal, so it's not going to be an issue. Um, these people over here, we could try to become friends with one of them. That might not be a terrible idea. I'm going to arbitrarily just choose this one. We're going to try to make friends over there, um, and then we won't care too much about the other one. We could always do an emergency bribe, but if we can avoid having to spend more money on it, that would be okay. And yeah, uh, with levies, you don't assign the generals directly. The levies are raised from a province, and so the governor of that province becomes the general of the levy. Which means now when you're assigning governors, you're kind of thinking about a couple of different traits. I think we will go for a farming settlement as well at the same time. It's really handy, the extra food. What's our capital region? Is our capital over here? I think. Province of Mathia. It's 
so quite big. If we can go and get extra farm in here and help to boost the, uh, the capital. Yeah, we'll put it over here in Aceros. I think that's going to be okay. And yeah, that's Pella over here. Yeah, the city of Pella. All right. So that did spend all of our money. That's going to be okay. We don't have a mission running. We're going to get one started. The Antipatros' Legacy. I'm going to go ahead and hit this mission. This is our... This is our Macedonian kind of unique tree, as far as I understand it. Antipatros was a great ruler, governing Macedon while Alexander went east and defending her from the opportunists who sought her undoing in the wake of the king's death. His eldest son, Cassandros, a friend of the Argaid king, has chased Antipatros' illegitimate successor, uh, Polymerkin, out of Macedon, claiming the throne for the Antipatrid family and removing the threat of Alexander illegitimate foreign heir and bastard for the sake of the country. The antagonists stand strong in the east, these big yellow dudes over here, um, but they have made few friends in their fortune. We must ensure Antipatros' work is not undone by securing the continuation of his dynasty through Cassandros' legitimate Argaid heirs by Alexander's half-sister, Thessalonica. It's a lot of text. We can advance one of our quests right now, Dregs of uh, Pangaean. When we trigger this, we immediately lose 1,500 manpower. One of our areas, one of our provinces, will no longer produce precious metals when produce wood, but will give us big cash injection? The mines of Mount Pangaean founded the campaigns of Buka and Alexander. It's clear the fruit's drying up. Her last offerings will fund the destruction of the illegitimate successors. Well, that actually seems fine to me, and then it will lead to the next step. Bam. Dregs of Pang Pangaean. Since the Athenians' arrival, their foundations of the Aphipolis, Amphipolis, Amphipolis? The wealth of Mount Pangaean has been extracted by local rulers. However, though Pangaean is now a byword for endless streams of gold, the long exploitation in Philip and Alexander's costly campaigns have exhausted most of our wealth. Our need of funds is no less pressing than previous Macedonian rules. Let the remaining deposits be the basis for the stable rule. So, option one, gather the picks. We lose our manpower, and in a year, we get a big cash injection. Or we could keep the supply steady. This will bypass the mission. We'll permanently get dregs of Pangan. Slaves needed for local supply goes up. So this will keep precious metals happening. Won't replace it with wood, but won't give us the cash injection and makes it so that we'll never be able to duplicate, you know, get extra resources from slaves. No, no, let's gather the picks. Let's dig deeply and greedily. Yeah, I think the cash is going to be so much better for us. Uh, so we do have to wait a year for it, but I think that's going to go a long way towards funding our campaign. Now, we should take a quick look at our diplomatic situation. We actually have a ton of subjects. A lot of our neighbors, uh, if we go to diplomacy map mode over here. So these uh, blue people, these are our various um, tributaries and whatnot. That got loud, didn't it? Um, so we have, we have a lot of subordinates. They're not terribly big. But there's quite a few of them. So we've got a tributary, we've got tribal vassal, we've got a feudatories, another tributary, and another tribal vassal. So we've got kind of a mishmash of different relations. Some of these don't actually use relationship slots or diplomatic slots. Where do we see that in this game? There's a, there's a limit to how many rep, uh, relationships we can have. Right down here. So we're only at one of three. So we can maybe go shopping for... Um, allies. The other thing, though, is these can sometimes be upgraded to um, sort of stronger versions. So this tributary over here, they pay us money, and we promise to protect them. But that's that's it, right? If we go in a war, uh, Ambracia doesn't jump in on our side. But they're tiny, so maybe it doesn't matter, and we just appreciate having their money. But they might ask to change their stance, which, if they become sort of fuel, full sort of um, vassals of ours, they do occupy, uh, occupy a relationship slot, but we have more options with them, they join us in a war, and in addition to that, we can integrate them later on. So we might want to keep one empty slot for that in case they come towards us, but we should at least consider getting an ally. Now, I don't know where we should go shopping for that. Yeah, I know. The, the head placement's going to be tricky. Maybe I'll put it over here. So if there's a war, it'll still show up. We'll still hopefully be able to see most of it. We might end up having to move the head around a few different places uh, until we figure out a good position for this. Um, we have CBs on some neighbors. Like, tons of CBs. So we don't have to worry about fabricating claims. We are guaranteeing Argus down over here. Which might get us some more wars and some uh, guarantees. Um, so, like, I'm wondering...
You know, maybe someone out over here, we could ask for an alliance. So they're not in our immediate sphere of people we're going to go to war with. But it might be useful. Um, you know, Armenia, maybe? Egypt? No, they're not interested. We get these guys. No. Um, no, they're not interested. They're really not interested. So yeah, some of the big boys aren't terribly into it. Rome would be into it. I'm just wondering if they're too far away. I'm also worried that Rome's going to pull us into a bunch of their stuff that we don't terribly care about. I feel like Rome might be too busy with its own wars to be a useful ally. When will this patch release? It's it's live now. At least that's what my uh, Steam news page said. Um, number of pops. Territories. I mean, they both have zero military tech. This one's bigger. Gatia is bigger, but a little further away. But that might be okay. I think we'll get these guys. We might actually get these guys as well. You like here? Well, they have 205 pops, actually. You know what? I like it, because I think the the Antigonids are going to be a bit of an issue. Common threat. Yeah. at these guys. Alright, that, that maxes out our uh, diplomatic relation. Why do you want to leave us? You hate those guys? The math is not checking out. Shouldn't we be a plus 20 right here? Maybe, maybe when we unpause. Let's give him a second after we unpause to see what does with these guys. Okay. Let's unpause now. Oh, yes, trade. So I'm going to go and take advantage of this new feature where we can automate uh, trade imports. We'll do that. And then these are, these are people um, who want to purchase stuff from us. It's actually, before we accept any more, let's, let's allow the opportunity for internal trade to trigger first. Go ahead and start accepting these. Which should be good for cash. And yeah, there we go. We're no longer losing over here. Yeah, plus 20. Excellent. So we just had to let a game tick go by for that to count. Civil War still thinking about breaking out 21 months. Oh yes, we're gonna try we're trying to make friends with uh Demades over here. Let's give him a heaping amount of gold. So this is our ruler. Arc ruler has a thousand personal gold. This is not this is not Macedon's treasury. We'll spend a ton of our personal gold, try to make a friend, and just stave off some internal issues. You can auto accept trade as well. How do we? Is that a setting? Where do we? Where do we set up auto accepting of trade? Because I'm probably fine with saying auto accept of trade. No, within the trade menu. Where's the trade menu? Because this is not. This is the administration menu. Top right. Use more words. Top right of where? Trade tab thinking to the left. Top right or top left? Alright, hold on. Trade overview. Ah, accept all trades. There it is. Perfect. Top right. You got... <laughs> People arbitrarily picking uh, directions. Incredible chat. Good job. Yeah. Ask chat a question, you get four different answers. Sometimes none of them are right. Makes it very tricky. All right, this is our still trying to suck up to Demades over here. I'll uh, publicly praise his deeds for a moderate amount. Um, yeah, we can lose a little political influence, I think is okay. Stability would suck more. This is Mastodon actually spending money, which we'd not like to do. So we'll publicly praise his deeds. I think that's gonna be okay. 